It's their birthright to become human beings, to become real people, not to become junk people that spend their lives in trivialized malls, buying junk goods to fill their junk lives. How much more? When are we going to wake up collectively as an ummah and respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu astajeebu lillahi wa lirrasool idha da'akum lima yuhyeekum. When will we answer that call? When will we respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger to something that will bring us to life? The implication in the ayah is as long as we do not respond to Allah's call and to the Messenger of Allah's call, we are dead people. Our hearts are dead. Our lives are dead. And our society is a society of death. It's a society that celebrates the death of the spirit in giving life, in giving life to the lowest pursuits of humanity. This is the death of the soul because the soul can only be brought back to life by recognizing why it was created, for what it was created, and then setting out and striving to achieve that goal, recognizing that we will have shortcomings, that we will make mistakes, that those mistakes are part of our humanity, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows those mistakes because He created us to make mistakes so that we could turn to Him and He could in turn turn to us and forgive us. And this is why we were created. We were created to respond to our ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only way that a slave feels its ubudiyah, its servanthood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in its abject nature. It is in its subjugation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that occurs by doing wrong and then desiring the atonement desiring to reconnect with one's true nature. And this is why we were given wudu. What a gift, the gift of wudu. What a gift, the gift of purifying ourselves. What a gift is the gift of prayer, to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a gift to be able to give munajat. In a recent article in one of these magazines, they mention the fact that more Americans are playing than ever before. Adults playing children's games. From bongo jumping to flying in their, uh, these machines that they make to jump off mountains and all of these things. This is what they're doing with their lives. With the preciousness of life. One time you have, one short life you have to do something. To do something great, to be great people. One short span. Why are they doing all these things? They say to relieve the stress of their lives. Just to taste for one instant, to have an adrenaline rush, to feel alive. That's all they're trying to do. And by jumping off a bridge with rubber strings and seeing a cement sidewalk heading right for it, suddenly he feels for one moment that he's actually alive. And he wants to repeat that experience because he wants to feel alive. But that is not the life that the human being was created for. It's not through adrenaline rushes. It's not through the rush of heroin penetrating your, your, your brain. It's not through the rush of cocaine snorted. It's not through the rush of jumping out of an airplane skydiving. It's not through the rush of being in an emergency room doing cardiac resuscitation. Those aren't the things that will make you feel alive. The only thing that will make you feel alive is to become a slave of the hay, to become a slave of the living who never dies. And this is the challenge of the human being. And this is what we have to wake up to. We have to wake up to something. I want to ask a question in here. How many people have a pen and, a, and paper here? How many people brought pen and paper? This is part of our crises. Every hand should have, they should raise their hand. Because either you came here to learn something, or you came here out of curiosity, 
or you came here to be entertained, or you came here because somebody dragged you here, or you came here, like Muhammad Sharif said, to take notes for the Canadian government, or maybe for the United States government. I don't know. And maybe they have pen and paper too, because they don't go anywhere without, they always bring pen and paper and a recording machine, right? And that's why they're ruling the world, because they work at it. They work hard, right? But we, we should have pen and paper. What I've noted is that, is that a, the women tend to always have pen and paper, right? Seriously, and it's not for nothing that women are taking over in the universities and in all the major fields now because the men are watching football. It's like, <laughs> it's what somebody said, seriously, somebody said about the fiasco in Washington, right? And that's a very good example of, of what's part of the crises. But really, Islam looks at, at, uh, at, at peccadillos as really it's the least of, of the problems. In fact, the Republican Party in the United States is, is really, uh, they, they're contributing more to the destruction, to the moral destruction of the United States because they serve corporate interests completely and wholeheartedly. And it is the corporation that is destroying families and communities more than any other single factor in the United States, really. And so they are, they're hypocrites, right? They're hypocrites, and they deserve people like whatever that pornographer's name is who's exposing as many of them as he can, because they are hypocrites.